Always. This conference will now be recorded. So, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Wright and my pronouns are they, them, and I am the Community Engagement Consultant for the Bureau of Library Development. Um, for those of you who are uh, in the chat, uh, currently in the meeting, excuse me, if you could post in the chat what library you're from, that would be great. And if you're interested in being added to the Community Connections newsletter or and or the Connection Creators email list, uh, please post that in the chat as well. Um, so it's good to see some uh, return people. Uh, nice to see all of you. Uh, today we will be discussing um, uh, National Preparedness Month, Hurricane Preparedness and Recovery, Library Card Sign Up Month, and Community Gardens. Um, if, it, if you have a webcam or a microphone, if you could turn them on at this time so we can see and hear you, that'd be great. Um, right now it's just me and Daryl and I'd love to see a few more uh, faces in our little Hollywood square of libraries. <laughs> Um, if anyone has a topic that they'd like to discuss, uh, please feel free to chime in at any time. These discussions are an opportunity for um, you to connect with your fellow library staff. Um, she's not on the call currently, but I know uh, Sarah Shaw from the State Library has submitted a few questions. So uh, if she ends up joining us, then uh, perhaps she'll ask them. Uh, for those of you just uh, joining us and coming in, we are um, just getting started, so you haven't missed anything. Um, and as you're coming in, if you could just post in the chat what library you're from, if you're interested in um, being added to the Community Connections newsletter list and or the Connection Creators email list, uh, that would be appreciated. And if you have a webcam or a microphone, um, just uh, turn them on if you're able to. I know all of us are not always in the most uh, quiet and secluded of areas. Okay. Again, good to see some uh, familiar faces and some new ones. It's always nice to see new people. Um, so uh, September is uh, National Preparedness Month, which is uh, meant to raise awareness about the importance of preparing for disasters and emergencies that could happen at any time. Um, you know, typically in Florida, our main concern is hurricanes, uh, floods, and fires. But uh, as we found out, you know, last year, health crises can be equally as devastating. Uh, the current theme for this year for National Preparedness Month as uh, put forth by ready.gov is prepare to protect. Preparing for disasters is protecting everyone you love. Um, ready.gov will also be releasing uh, some public service announcements uh, that encourage preparedness that is targeted to the Hispanic community. And I definitely recommend that uh, all of you bookmark that link and check back every so often to see if the videos have uploaded. I checked yesterday afternoon and I believe they still weren't ready yet, but uh, Daryl should also be dropping a link to that in the chat. Thank you, Daryl. Um, so just to get us started with um, a question. Uh, so what elements have you found to be particularly critical in your disaster plans? And I will also be posting that question in the chat just to make sure that um, everyone can read the question in case you happen to have an audio glitch. Um, if you uh, don't have a microphone, you can always post your uh, answer in the chat and I'll read it out for the others to make sure that it's uh, getting captured by the uh, recording. Has anyone found maybe something um, that they wouldn't initially consider uh, typical for being included in a disaster plan, 
some items in your toolkit that maybe you're uh, glad you included. Okay, um, so has anyone, um, you know, we don't have to stay on this. Uh, oh, thank you, Courtney. Courtney is saying that uh, battery operated fans are great, which yes, that's definitely something essential, especially once the power goes out, anything that's battery operated or um, I don't know if anyone has uh, used the sort of like hand crank uh, lights, whether anyone has had good success with those, the ones that you uh, charge manually, either through cranking them or uh, sh I've seen a variant where you shake them, but um, I believe with with when you sh when it's a light that you have to shake, you have to shake it for at least an hour, and I'm not sure that's a feasible option. Yes, solar powered phone chargers. Mary just uh, posted that in the chat are helpful. Uh, for those of you just uh, coming in, we're discussing uh, elements that you found critical in your disaster plans or uh, items you're glad you included in your toolkit that maybe aren't typically listed. I will repost. Okay, Adam is saying that instant coffee is a must, which definitely I had some coffee myself this morning <laughs> to help wake me up because it was a bit of a, a bit of a groggy morning. Definitely agree with instant coffee. Um, on the subject of uh, ready.gov, they also have a social media toolkit to get out the word about uh, National Preparedness Month. And Daryl, if you could drop the link to that, uh, that'd be great. Um, and I'm so I'm curious whether or not anyone on the call um, is utilizing that toolkit and whether you've seen, um, you know, what has been the public's response to it? Has it been positive? Has it been neutral? Um, are people really engaging with it? Thank you, Daryl. Oh, also for the people uh, just joining us, uh, if you feel comfortable doing so and turning on your webcam, um, that would be appreciated just so we can see your smiling or masked <laughs> faces. Okay, Mary is saying that um, one of uh, her libraries is providing a link on their website to ready.gov. Is anyone um, is anyone working with any community partners uh, for National Preparedness Month or disaster preparedness in general? And it's fine if you're not, I know that's the, uh... oh, nice. Courtney's saying that uh, one of her libraries offers vaccines weekly. So um, that is super rad. 
um, in terms of uh, resources, uh, I did want to bring to your attention in terms of uh, disaster preparedness resources uh, on the Bureau's website, we do have a web page called the Wheel of Resources, which um, provides resources for steps to take before, during, and after a natural disaster. Um, and I also wanted to mention um, something I saw while I was on Twitter. The uh, Florida Forestry Service is uh, offering one free tree to be planted in your location to assist with repairing canopy damage from Hurricane Michael. So if you live in Bay, Calhoun, Franklin, Gadsden, Gulf, Holmes, Jackson, Liberty, or Washington County, you're eligible to get a free tree. And I will uh, post, yes, uh, Daryl just dropped the link to it in the chat. And I will also uh, post the list of counties again, just so uh, everyone can read that. But yeah, um, I checked out the website. The uh, uh, system is really neat. You put in your address and then uh, it has a uh, sort of like Google map satellite view of the building and you mark out the shape of the building and it will show you the best place to plant a tree that will give you the greatest cost return. Um, and I believe one one variant of the tree has already sold out because it's really popular, but there should, when I last looked, there were still at least three other types of trees that you can plant. Um, so it's definitely a really cool opportunity. And I'm sad that those of us in <laughs> Leon County can't get a free tree to plant because, <laughs> I mean, then again, we do have a lot of trees as it is. Um, so while we're on the subject, and again, at any time, if someone else um, has a topic that the, or a question that they'd like to put forth to the other attendees, um, feel free to just uh, turn on your mic and ask the question to bring up the subject or post it in the chat, and you know we'll get that discussion started. But while we're on the subject of monthly observances, uh, as we all know, this month is also Library Card Sign Up Month, and so. I'm wondering what sort of outreach and marketing initiatives uh, you guys are doing at your libraries. I saw that the Alachua Library has been posting their oversized library cards on social media and Boynton Beach um, had these amazing bingo sheets where you can win a canvas tote for filling out the sheet. So I'm curious what sort of uh, outreach and marketing initiatives you guys have going on this month. Is anyone um, using the uh, library card sign up month uh, promotional materials from ALA? Okay, so Michaela just posted in the chat that they're offering a free book to any child who signs up for their own li for their own card, offering digital library card signups to area seniors, online services, hosting sign up events. Okay. Um, Adam is saying in Palm Beach County they had a commissioner present a proclamation, um, and I will definitely be checking out uh, that Instagram <laughs> link later on because um, that's. That's cool. Um, on that subject, actually, as Michaela was uh, talking about digital library card signups, um, are you guys still doing digital library cards or have you phased that out as uh, more libraries are reopening and having, you know, in-person access? This is Adam from Palm Beach County. Um, so we st stopped offering our electronic 
um, library card uh, when we reopened our physical buildings, but we've continued to offer um, uh, people the opportunity to apply for and um, uh, to apply for library cards online through FaceTime or any other platforms. Okay, cool. Do you um, do you see that a lot of people are uh, taking you up on that offer to FaceTime and uh, sign up for a card? Over time, we're getting. I think we're getting fewer people that are taking advantage of it. Um, maybe because they're coming into our branches, um, but it's always something that we can offer when someone lets us know that um, they're not they're quarantining or what have you. Um, but we're also finding that. Uh, there are populations that um, could benefit from an electronic only card. So we're exploring that in a different way now and on a more permanent basis. Okay, great. And uh, Michaela just posted in the chat that we only offer digital, well, they only offer digital library cards to at risk populations. And that online circulation is very high and uh, they don't believe that they'll ever lower them to pre-pandemic levels. Candace is saying that um, they had e-cards before the pandemic and, and will continue to offer them. And it would be great if there were a better way to register for them because Polaris has limits. Um, so I guess on that note, uh, yeah, are, how are you guys uh, setting up the registration method for uh, online library cards? Are all of you using Polaris or are you using a different method? Okay. Candace is saying that she assumes different because not everyone uses Polaris ILS, which makes sense. Okay, Adam is saying that they have a homegrown form and oh wow, three languages on the website that pre-populates a temporary card in Cersei. Uh what are the three languages, uh Adam? Okay, I was thinking it was English, Spanish, and Haitian Creole. That covers the, oops, ouch, the top three. Yeah, I'm definitely seconding uh, that, Casey. Casey's asking Michaela if uh, she could, if, if you have a mic, Michaela, if you can identify at-risk populations and what sort of info you collect from patrons for that. Um, yeah, no problem. So. Basically, um, any population that identifies themselves as at risk, we will offer the services to. We're not um, a place that will judge that. That's if you personally feel unsafe to come into our building, we don't want to force it and we'd still want to offer any sort of materials that we can, whether that be through homebound or just our online services, basically Flipster, um, Hoopla, all the ones that everybody has. Um, going into it, I mostly have been focusing on senior living centers. Um, right now we are in three different ones. One of them I was able to go personally and because they are seniors, many of them aren't um, necessarily equipped with computers, personal or emails, that sort of thing. So I drafted a digital form that is printed out to them. They fill it out. It's very short. It just has basic information. And if they do decide to come into the library, we fill the rest out later. Um, but it just, we identify that they live within our city. So we can provide the services to them, um, a few other things, and then we just leave it until the next time because they are mostly only using it for online services. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Michaela, for clarifying on that point. Yeah, definitely. Casey's saying that uh, she knows patron privacy comes up a lot. Um, let me see. 
Oh, um, while we're on the subject of uh, Library Card Sign Up Month, I did want to share with all of you that the Bureau uh, Library Development recently promoted the State Library, which resulted in uh, 30 library staff becoming card holders. Um, and if you'd like to get your own uh, li State Library card, Daryl will be uh, dropping a link into the chat. Thank you, Daryl. So that's, you know, really good to see. Um, so has anyone, and I know this this um, is sort of going to be a recurring theme with this uh, call, because I'm interested. One of the things as the community engagement consultant is to, you know, tell you, you guys' story, y'all's story, but also to help, um, you know, promote what you're doing, connect you to resources and partnerships. So I'm curious if anyone has uh, partnered with anyone in your community to help promote Library Card Sign Up Month. Or if you were perhaps, if you had considered or attempted to reach out to anyone, uh, any sort of community groups to promote it. Again, I know Alachua County, I believe, partnered with some local celebrities and influencers. So I don't know if anyone was doing anything similar. Ooh, nice. Um, you'll definitely, uh, please tell me more about that, uh, Candace, if you can. Candace is saying that they have a promotion going on called Show Your Card Osceola with partnerships with businesses offering discounts, and it's going well. So yeah, please tell us more about that. Hello. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this was something that we started, it was something that kind of happened like a long time ago, and then I started it um in 2019 up again um to try and revisit and it was a slow start that first year we only had like four businesses that year but this year <clears throat> we've got a really good turnout because i involved the branch managers and all of our leaders in the system um to assign them to go out we had um these flyers that we printed that were a call to businesses saying that for the month of September, we want you to offer some sort of discount or some sort of perk for your business to anybody who shows their library card to um, increase, you know, a library card is already super valuable, but just to give an extra um, added increase for the month of September um, for people to sign up for library cards because of all the cool discounts they get and free stuff. So um, they took the flyers around um, to the businesses and we made sure to say what they would get out of the partnership. So we highlighted on there um, that we would send out a newsletter and how many followers we have on our newsletter and that we would make social media posts and how many followers we have on social media so they could see what kind of reach we got and what kind of value that would be for their business. Um, and so, we had people at each of our branches that went out and sort of visited different businesses in the area and um we got quite a lot and it's people from all over the county this time not just in one area which is really nice and um we actually checked our google analytics two days after we sent the newsletter to our patrons about it and the web page had almost 2000 hits on it after only two days so it was obviously something that our um, patrons were really into. So I will post the link so you can see our page. Yes, definitely. 2000. Wow, that is yeah. amazing. Um, so like what, what kind of businesses were included in the promotion? Was it just uh, restaurants or like? Not just restaurants. Um, I'm going to post the link so you can see. Yeah. Um, there we go. Here's the link. This year we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We've got fourteen right now. Um, 
businesses on there. Most of them are offering like 10% off or some sort of percentage, but other ones are offering like a free appetizer or a free entry. Um, at, while Florida is offering a free admission for one day. Um, they do that anyway with us, but the fact that it was in September, we we like looped it into library card sign up month. Um, yeah, and once it's public, once it's out there, um, we're getting people contacting us wanting to be added to it constantly. So I'll keep adding businesses throughout the month until the month is over um, for people to add. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in the free admission to the gator park. <laughs> I love alligators. Um, <laughs> I'm also noticing that uh, you have a hashtag associated with it. Um, have you seen a lot of engagement? Have um, Have you been getting photos you, from people? You know, I haven't actually looked. Uh, I will have to look and I'll have to ask my graphics people if they have noticed that. Okay, well, I'd definitely be interested in hearing about that. And yeah. <laughs> I'll have to check it out myself after this meeting. I'm going to look now. Silly of yeah. me not looked. Yeah, does anyone else have a... Uh... Oh, Casey has a question for you, Candice. Uh, have you been, have you all been able to track if you've had an increase in new card signups tied to the partnerships? I wish we had a way to track that. Um... <laughs> Uh, that might be an improvement um, that we can add next year or something. Um, I, I, I think each year I do this, I find something that I'm like, oh, this would be better if I did this, and this would be better if I did that. So next year I probably will add that, which is to have the staff maybe ask, was this a result of, so how did, you know, what led you to come and get a card today kind of thing, a little survey or something to see what the impact is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how did you hear about us? Definitely. Yeah, yeah no, right now, no. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly just, you know, every month we get our stats about how many library card stat or, you know, signups we have anyway. So we'll just cross our fingers and hope for there to be an increase this year. <laughs> Okay, cool. Super, super cool. Does anyone else have um, something they want to share about a uh, library card sign up month? Whether that's um, on mic or in the chat. Okay, so uh, changing topics a bit, um, I'd like to uh, talk about one of my, I'd like to ask about one of my favorite subjects, uh, community gardens and seed libraries. Um, I've seen, you know, so many libraries with community gardens or seed libraries, like the Jefferson County Public Library. Um, for those of you who have either a community garden and or seed library, uh, what were some unexpected challenges you faced? Um, so I'm actually in the process of starting a C library. We are um, opening ours up with our new building, which is opening on um, December 11th, 2021. Um, and since it is our first year, we did ma mainly a bunch of research, we attended a few conferences to see what everybody else was doing, um, and then went full force into what we're doing now. We were lucky enough to have a initial grant um, and then were kind of sent off for funding later on, which luckily we did figure out funding for the next two years. Um, and it's been really good either way. I think the community is very interested in it. Um, one challenge is trying to get a community garden near our library space. We do have access to a garden at our local community center um, that we can do for outreach classes, which is beneficial to me, but not necessarily beneficial to the librarians who work and have patrons come to classes at the library. 
Um, so that's one thing that we are trying to work on right now. But everything else has been really easy. Everyone is very excited about food growing and programs that bring pollinators to the area. Um, and it's been a really awesome project. I think that if you have the opportunity, definitely try it out. Okay, yeah. And uh, Courtney just posted in the chat a uh, challenge being finding times to meet up for planning, sorting, packaging seeds that work for all the community partners involved. And Courtney, um, I don't know if you want to elaborate a bit more on the community partners that you're working with, um, because I know in a previous Connection Creators meeting, there was a question about, you know, uh, where people were sourcing their seeds for their seed library. Um, so we got, we have um, the IFAS Extension Office involved, and we have Herbalists Without Borders. They're um, in the Big Bend area, but um, one of the founding members lives in Monticello. We have gotten a lot of our live our seeds for the seed library from Herbalists Without Borders, and then we got a lot just using um, library money from Jefferson County. Okay, great, thank you. Um, uh, for anyone who already has a uh, community garden or seed library, uh, do you plan to expand the program? And in what way do you plan on expanding it? If anyone wants to uh, uh, talk on that subject. Uh, Michaela is saying that Ideas for Us is a great partner in the uh, CF area, and Courtney would like to start a community garden. Uh, Michaela is hoping to expand the seed library with a community garden, hopefully, and I'll be hoping for that as well for y'all. Uh, Casey has a question for uh, Mary about whether or not Calhoun was able to replant their community garden after Michael. Hey, Casey. Um, I believe they were. Uh, they have a community garden in a couple different branch locations. I think it's three at this time. Um, I don't know if they had them at all six locations before Hurricane Michael, but I do know that right now they have three going. I don't know how active the community is involved in that. Um, I know that in the past they had um, some like uh, volunteers. I know that there were some um, seniors that volunteered, but I don't know how often that's happening now with the pandemic. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Mary. Candace is saying that they have a group that they started a partnership with called Love Makes Me Grow that is helping with uh, the seed library and the community gardens. Um, so that's definitely something to check out and I'm definitely gonna take a look at that. Um, for those of you who have a community garden, uh, what do you do with the harvested food? Do you donate it? Do you use it in a cooking class? I'm just sort of curious as to what happens once everything's uh, grown. Do, you know, if there's volunteers, do they help? I mean, do they uh, get to take the harvested, uh, you know, food home? Okay, Mary is saying that the uh, Calhoun Library System was offering the food to anyone who needed it, which is great.
Okay. Um, if anyone else has uh, anything they want to discuss on the topic of community gardens and seed libraries, you know, please feel free to turn on your microphone or post in the chat. Um, Uh, at this time, if anyone has a topic that they'd like to discuss, um, please feel free to just, uh... okay, Michaela actually has a question. Uh, she's asking, has anyone attached your seed libraries to children's or adult programming? Thank you, Amy. Amy has posted in the chat that Leon County Public Library has offered children's craft activities related to making carrots out of popsicle sticks and adult programming with uh, the UF uh, IFAS Extension Office for learning how to care for a uh, garden, which I was just about to mention <laughs> that the Leon County Public Library has done quite a bit for uh, in terms of seed libraries. Um, Amy, since you're, um, since you're here, do you know uh, how successful that's been? Uh, the children's craft activities, was there, was there a good turnout? Um, yeah, there was. They, they had it, an option since they just rolled out the children's programming in, for the spring library. They have one in spring and in fall. Um, they had it where you could either take it home in an activity bag or you could stay and make it with people. They, I think every single branch, they have seven branches, um, they did really well. They had really good turnout for it. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are. For our UF IFAS, they always do a kickoff event for spring and fall where they teach about the specific seeds they're giving out and how to do you know, proper gardening for that time of year. That always does really, really well. Um, it's one of the most popular and most attended events of each um, season. And UFI Fast, at least in Leon County, they have really great agents there that do a lot of programming and they're free and we use them all the time and they're really good at presenting. So they're, they've been a really, really great resource for them. I used to work there, by the way, if anyone doesn't know, <laughs> I used to work there. I now work for the Bureau of Library Development, but um, UFI Fast, if you have one in your area that you can reach out to, they might have similar options for that. Um, the Master Gardeners, um, they actually helped us because they were required to do volunteer hours. They helped us pack the seeds, but they didn't um, necessarily help with the events. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you, Amy. I was just about to say that uh, Amy used to work at the Leon County Library, but now she works for us. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Casey. Casey has just uh, dropped into the chat a link to UFIFAS. Um, and on that note, has um, I know it's been mentioned before, uh, someone was mentioning that they've worked with their extension office. Has anyone else uh, worked with their um, local extension office, uh, whether it's the Master Gardeners uh, program that Michaela mentioned or just a general partnership to uh, for community gardens. Uh, I know the Leon one a while ago, uh, the UF IFAS did one concerning canning. Oh, uh, you know. Okay, so Michaela's saying that they've been in contact with them and but haven't had any in-person meetings or events yet. So okay, that's good to hear. Um, So uh, we still have a good chunk of time before uh, we all have to say goodbye. Um, so at this time, if anyone has a subject that they wanted to bring up that wasn't on the agenda or just uh, something that uh, came to mind as we've been having these conversations, uh, feel free to just ask the question uh, via your microphone or post in the chat. Again, these, you know, these meetings are an opportunity for um, all of you to share what's working at your libraries, what's not working at your libraries, um, any sort of questions that come up that maybe you want to ask others how they're dealing with uh, 
that particular issue. Okay, um, does anyone uh, on the call have something that's going on at their library that they'd like to share? Because uh, one of the things I do is I'm in charge of Stars in the Sunshine State, which is um, a program where I, uh, oh gosh, I hope no one hurts my stomach. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, write articles regarding the uh, programs and services that uh, you guys are doing. So does anyone uh, have anything that maybe they wanna share? It can also just be something that's currently in the works, um, you know, that hasn't uh, quite launched yet. But, you know, as I, as I always say about these sort of things, if it's important to you, it's important to us. So. <laughs> Michaela is saying if anyone is in the Central Florida area, the Winter Park Library is having a community open house on December 11th. Uh, it will have activities, performances, games, and fun for the whole family. I believe I saw, I think I saw something about that on social media. So that's um, cool. Uh, who do you have uh, coming to the open house to do the activities and performances? Actually, yes, Candace does bring up a good point for um, anyone who might not be aware, the Winter Park Library is uh, moving to a new super cool space age, <laughs> new library building, um, which is, I agree with Candace, it's, it's very exciting. Um, so yeah, Michaela, is it going to be in the new building? Because <laughs> that would be super cool. Um, Oh, no, 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 Michaela, you're fine. <laughs> I was just thinking about it as I was saying it. Oh, wow, poetry performances. Oh, it'll be the first day in the new building. That, that's cool. Yeah, so that sounds like it's going to be a really fun event. So if you're in the Central Florida area, definitely, I would suggest checking that out. And then also, uh, thinking about it, Michaela, the library is going to be closed for several months, isn't it, while you guys move from one location to another? How are you guys uh, handling that? How is that going? Okay, so Michaela is saying that the last day uh, in the current building is at the end of October, and then they'll be moving for a month and uh, open, reopening on December 11th. Um, Michaela, what's a fairy door walk? Is it a door that's, well, actually, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I should guess. I'm imagining a sort of like plant and a lot of glitter, <laughs> a glittery door. Uh, 
Oh, oh, those fairy doors. Okay, yes, I know what you're, yes, they are super cute. Um, yes, yeah, so fairy doors are small doors that fit into root systems and knots of trees. Yeah, they're, they're super cute. Um, I'm going to see if I can find a quick example. Oh, okay. So uh, the Winter Park Library will be publishing the official list soon. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for that because um, it definitely sounds like that's going to be uh, interesting. Okay, great. I was hoping there was. Um, in the meantime, does anyone else have uh, something they'd like to share that's going on at their library? It doesn't have to be something that's new. It could be something that's going on at your library that maybe other people aren't aware about. Um, I've also just dropped a link uh, to a Wikipedia page on what a fairy door is. Um, it's there. Super cool. Okay, um, so as we uh, near uh, ever so closer to three o'clock, I do want to, um, you know, take this moment to thank all of you for coming today. Um, I appreciate, you know, all of you taking your, the time out of your schedule to attend these quarterly meetings. And I just have a, a few final housekeeping items as we're about 10 minutes to uh, three o'clock. Um, I wanted to let you all know that on September 20th at 3 p.m., Claudia Holland will be hosting our monthly DLIS discussion. Uh, the topic this month is COHA, the open source library management system that several libraries in Florida are using. Registration is required. Um, a link to that if you are subscribed to the Building Success newsletter, um, I believe a link to that has already gone out. Um, but you can always get in touch with Claudia directly about that. Um, as I mentioned, I do write articles for Stars in the Sunshine State, and I'm uh, putting together a focus group about Stars in the Sunshine State to better assess uh, library staff's awareness of the program. So if you're interested in joining the group, please email me or call me. Um, I will also mention uh, the focus group and these last uh, closing housekeeping items in the uh, post-meeting email. Um, so a follow-up email will be sent uh, after this meeting to everyone who's uh, registered for the meeting and for others who also requested who may not have had a chance to register. Uh, it will have the uh, chat log, a link to the video recording, and the resources uh, shared in the chat during this meeting. Um, I'll also be sending out a post call survey. And I know, I know that all of you are definitely, and myself included, fatigued from constant surveys, but it would really mean a lot to me if you filled out this survey. So I know what is and isn't working for these quarterly meetings because um, this is the third meeting uh, ever for this connection creators call. And uh, you know, I I will play the newbie card. I'm new. I've only I've I will have been here for a year at the end of the month, but I really want to make sure that these meetings are as successful as possible, that they, you know, help you in the be the best that it can. So if you can fill out the survey, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> and that, um, that about covers everything that I needed to uh, say. So with these last few minutes, if anyone has any sort of last minute things that they wanted to share, observations they wanted to make, or questions that they had, 
that maybe we didn't get a chance to get to earlier. Um, now's the time. <laughs> Okay, Michaela just asked, does anyone have any information on acquiring free children's books for giveaways? We used to get free books for outreach from Goodwill, but they discontinued their program. Kayla also is saying that uh, they do receive some in donations, but also supply their local uh, little little free library. For some reason, I blanked on the F and bookstore with those. Candace is saying that they just use what we get in donations. On the subject of the uh, little free library, um, for those of you who uh, stock those, uh, how is that going? Are you seeing a lot of, uh, not trade, a lot of uh, action for lack of a better term with the little free libraries? Are you seeing the books actually being, you know, used and new books being placed in? Michaela's saying yes, depending on the location. Do you know um, which which locations w are get a lot of? Uh, okay, yeah, I was just about to ask which ones were popular. The ones near playgrounds. In okay, you have volunteers restock them. Yeah, if I was if I was a little kid near a playground and I saw a little free library, I'd probably just honestly just set up a little tent outside and live next to it, <laughs> eagerly waiting for more books. I was a voracious reader as a child. <laughs> Definitely, Michaela, I agree. They are a great way to get books in the hands of kids. Like the easier you can make it for a child to have access to the, to a book, the better. Although, um, I guess that's a good question um, because most of the time when I see images of little free libraries, they seem to be about the height of the average adult. Uh, for the ones near the playgrounds, are they shorter or is there a step stool for them to be able to access or is it the case of like the adults are the ones who get the books and hand them to the children because i was just thinking it would be interesting to have ones that were child height so that way they don't have to wait for an adult to let them <laughs> read a book Okay, so Michaela is saying the bottom shelf could be reached by a five-year-old child, but toddlers would need an adult. That makes sense. Okay, and we have about five minutes left. So uh, I suppose final, final call for any comments, questions, concerns. Just give you guys a moment just to make sure.
Well, in the absence of any other uh, discussion items, I will just thank you once again for uh, taking time to be here. And um, the next quarterly meeting should be sometime in December, but an announcement will be sent out with date, time, and the registration link. Um, so again, thank you all for being here and uh, I'll give you back the last <laughs> four minutes of this meeting. So thank you everyone.